The heart races. Deep breaths are hard to find. Blood rushes through the body. That's fear, anxiety. Scientifically, we tend to talk about fear as being a response to immediate threats, which is right there in front of us. Anxiety is where there's the possibility of danger, but it's kind of looming on the horizon. And we're trying to work out how probable is it? How bad might it be? What can we do to avoid it? Think of a lion right in front of you. That's an immediate threat. Looming in the distance, not as scary, but still something to be worried about. Evolutionarily, think about the hypervigilance that goes along with anxiety as a very adaptive trait. Because a long time ago, the world was super dangerous and humans needed to use that hypervigilance as a way to evolve. It all starts here, specifically in this region. Our amygdala is kind of flashing away, saying there's something dangerous we need to react to. And we release various neurotransmitters and we need some of those to have a good level of attention to be able to be focused we'll see the blood being shunted away from our extremities and into the larger muscle groups because if we needed to escape, it would be necessary those organs be heavily involved. The world has changed and threats typically aren't as clear cut as a lion in front of you. So let's take a look at how our brains respond to uncertain threats. When we're faced with potential danger or uncertain situations, we feel better if we feel in control. We find it harder when probabilities are changing rapidly. Often what we rely upon are these kind of simulation mechanisms where we try and imagine if we were to engage in different courses of action. But that's also often where biases can come in. Like zero risk bias, which might explain the behavior of panic buying. As humans, we have a strong desire for absolute certainty. So when we can't eliminate the risks out of our control, zero risk bias may persuade us to completely eliminate certain perceived risks, regardless of how irrational they may be. Some panic buy, while others experience optimism bias. We kind of have these very self-protective intrinsic desire to fill up a world a safe place and nothing bad will happen to us. When probabilities are hard to estimate, often those optimism biases kick in. But no, this is real. This can have consequences. Okay, back to the brain. The amygdala going into overdrive is necessary for short-term threats, but can have negative consequences when threats persist for the long term. So we can think of neurons in the brain as being a bit like trees with branches, and those branches are called dendrites. In the prefrontal cortex, which is involved in reasoning and decision-making, we actually see those branches begin to kind of wither and die back, while as in the amygdala, we see those branches kind of grow and develop. And so that can lead us to have stronger responses to danger and for them to be less regulated. This deregulation can further lead to anxiety and in some cases, show a correlation with depression and trauma. But these factors aren't permanent, and positive approaches to mental health can help reduce them over time. Our ancestors saw situations that challenged their safety and well-being, but overcame them. Humans are adaptable. We, we are resilient, and we have that in us. So even when fearful and anxious, We'll do what we've always done, use our emotions to evolve.